Welcome back Deep Ruby TV viewers. It's an interesting location. I'm gonna talk about that a bit, but today we actually have a battle for you. We're gonna be testing out the brand new Sony G Master 50 millimeter F1.4 against the Sigma Art 50 millimeter F1.4, which we reviewed earlier. Now when we tested the Sigma 50 millimeter Art, we went to the Calgary Farmer's Market, but now we've got something a little bit better to test both these lenses. We're actually at the Calgary Boat and Outdoor Show. They've been kind enough to let us shoot here for our little battle between the two 50s here. But I'm also gonna shoot a lot of sample gallery photos for the Sony G Master here, as well as outside where we get some nicer light. Either way, we've got a fantastic venue to check out both these lenses. So let's talk about weight and handling. Now the Sigma Art 50 millimeter is absolutely quite a large lens. 72 millimeter filter thread on that, 670 grams. You compare that to the Sony 50 millimeter 1.4, which is 516 grams. That's like a quarter of a knocked only and a 67 millimeter filter thread. So definitely a significant weight and size savings when you're looking at the Sony. Now as far as controls though, actually very similar. You're gonna get a nice aperture ring. You can absolutely click or de-click that aperture ring. You can lock it in auto as well. Custom buttons are available and they both have nice manual focusing rings. So this hot tub looks amazing, but I've already been told by the sales staff I'm doing it wrong. I'm supposed to be wearing less clothing and apparently it's supposed to be full of water, but I do find the actual chair itself incredibly relaxing. Anyways, splash. All right, so when it comes to autofocus, we have to keep in mind that we weren't able to test these lenses on the exact same body. We had the Sigma Art on an L mount, so we tested on the Panasonic S5 II. So it's not quite apples to apples, but at that same time, the Sigma on the S5 II, the autofocusing was very quick, from near to far, no issues. And of course, the Sony G Master on the A7R5 that we're testing with its linear XD motors, same thing. I mean, just super fast focusing from near to far. So I'd call that pretty much a nice tie, even though it's not an apples to apples comparison. One thing to keep in mind though, with Sigma lens on a Sony body, you're not gonna be able to break the 15 frame per second maximum burst rate limitation, whereas the Sony G Master doesn't have that issue. So if you want the fastest shooting possible, then you'd wanna look at the Sony. Okay, so if you wanna do a flare test in a show, where do you actually find that? We don't wanna be outside. So, well, luckily the guys at Tactical Innovations Canada were kind enough to let us borrow a fourth, yeah, don't, it's horrible, bright. I will talk to her and stop. Take it, yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, but how did they do? Well, we take a look at the Sony G Master here. You can see, I feel that it actually handles the contrast really well. Still retains a lot of contrast, but the ghosting, it's kind of unique. You can see it there. Whereas when we go to the Sigma Art, I would say maybe not as much contrast as the Sony G Master, but the Art definitely has more subtle ghosting. So we're gonna call it a tie. I mean, they really do both handle bright light sources in the frame quite well. Okay, yes, okay, I'll stop talking. I'm sorry, I'll stop talking. So it turns out we're actually finding a lot of good vendors here that do lens testing. So Cutco Knives, that's silverware, perfect for our Loka test. That's that longitudinal chromatic aberration where you get those color fringes in the foreground and background out of focus areas. So actually, you know what, I'm just gonna say both together, the Sigma and the Sony, they do both exhibit Loka. You can see it here side by side, but it's basically identical. It's not major. Just remember that getting rid of Loka and post can be a little bit difficult. So you do have an issue here if you're shooting wide open, but they're pretty equal and they're pretty well managed. So the folks at NRS were nice enough to let us actually borrow their lights here to do our bokeh test. That worked out well. So first off, look at the Sigma Art, shooting it wide open at 1.4. You can see a little bit of cat's eye. We did see this when we actually tested the lens earlier. Um, still very clean, soft bokeh, nice transitions from in focus to out of focus. Looking at the Sony G Master at 1.4, I would say it's a little bit cleaner. The Sigma has some onion rings, but the Sony seems to be clean. And I would say the Sony's bokeh overall is just a little bit smoother, a little bit more natural looking, really nice transitions. Regardless, when you stop down to F4 on either lens, you'll notice the bokeh balls are nice and round. We're not getting sort of strange shapes and that cat's eye effect goes away in the corners. 
Okay, so let's talk about sharpness next. Now we gotta talk about two different lenses, but do keep in mind, although we shot them on different bodies, they were both shot on 60 megapixel sensors, so similar resolution for both test charts. So, looking at the Sigma Art 50 millimeter at f1.4 in the center of the chart, actually very decent amount of detail. We were pleased with that when we first tested it, but if you look at the Sony G Master 50 millimeter at f1.4, it is noticeably sharper. We just have more detail there. Both lenses, though, do suffer from a loss of contrast at f1.4, when we stop down to f4, you can see the Sigma Art sharpens up very nicely. We get more contrast. The Sony, I don't really notice more detail, but certainly the contrast is better. I would say when they're stopped down, both lenses are pretty similar, but wide open, the Sony G Master certainly has an edge. When we look at the corners, it's a very similar story. Here you can see the Sigma 50 millimeter Art wide open up in the upper left corner. Good amount of detail. Certainly does improve when we stop down to f4. When we look at the Sony G Master, again, I think actually it's incredibly sharp wide open even in the corners stopping down really just gives us improvement in contrast so if you're looking about these lenses I think it wouldn't be as big a difference if you're using lower resolution bodies but if you really want to push the resolution or you want to shoot the lens wide open at 1.4 a lot the Sony G Master I think is the clear winner here so, I mean, it looks like the Sony G Master 50 millimeter cleans up in pretty much every category, but one thing we haven't talked about is the price. If we compare the price of both these lenses, we can see that the Sony is substantially more expensive. That does have to be considered. If you're not shooting a high resolution body or you're not gonna shoot wide open a lot, I would say save your money and go for the art lens. That being said, the Sony G Master is a fantastic lens, probably one of the nicest 50 millimeters we've seen. It is worth considering that if you do want an even brighter 1.2 aperture, the Sony G Master 50 millimeter 1.2, although larger, isn't that much more expensive on top of this. So that's another factor to consider. All right, well, hopefully this helps you guys decide which lens might be better for you. And we did have a lot of fun at the Calgary Boat and Outdoor Show. Hopefully you did too. So big thanks to them for letting us shoot here. But do again, like and subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate that. Check out the socials, Instagram, Twitter down below. And uh, we'll see you guys all soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.